Good morning, Oksana. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? <laughs> Good, I'm fine. How are you this morning? Good, thanks. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, we are here together to do uh, another investigation session for this week. Uh, so I'm going to start counting down. I know you're really fast, relaxing, so I'm going to do it fast. Five. One. Now, Oksana, what can you sense or envision about the terms soul root or super soul? I just a um, big spiral of energy. It's coming from a like the essence of a cell and it's spiraling, getting bigger and bigger. Just when you expand yourself as an energy of a cell, that's what it is. I feel like anybody can be a, it's just a term of a soul uh, which is not controlled by anybody, anything and in its full potential. What can you sense or envision through the words soulmate? It's somebody whom you met uh, and you're having their lives together. You share a lot of experiences together. And I just see like rounds and rounds of lives together. So you know you recognize each other's pattern. You connect by that pattern of your vibration at different levels of experience. Who or what do you perceive to be a soulmate? just uh, a soul that I recognize and I am gravitate towards by vibration and we spend our lives together in different uh, planetary systems, universes, um, to just share experiences of different levels. So it's like co-creators sometimes too. Like sometimes souls unite in co-creation of a universe, for instance, or a planet. That's possible too. Is there a difference between soulmate and the twin flame? Yeah. Twin flame is created by I see like a new age movement mm -hmm. uh, to make you search for one, but this search by itself is influenced by the entities of that particular movement of new age. It's, it's like a huge mechanism that has a lot of entities in it controlling people who believe and through belief can give energy to this particular movement and a set of studies or rules or mm -hmm. belief systems. So how, how do you perceive this difference between the soulmate and the twin flame? It's just that or Soulmate else? is a natural thing oh. and twin flame is just like a fake made up term that is uh, serving the more the entities and the AI 
you know, to control person's perspective and manipulate. So, how how can we recognize a soulmate? Um, you meet somebody. You almost like have a déjà vu moment when you feel that person doesn't he doesn't ask questions normally people ask you he reads everything off your mind like you have a telepathic connection he has similar understanding he's using he's building I see like building of a sentence the same way mm -hmm. like you do viewing the world the same way perspectives are almost the same almost identical it, it and I feel like it, it sometimes it scares people but they feel like magnetized to this person they feel magnetized to each other like there is something that they are supposed to do they don't know what to do and why are they together and then if they are clean and they don't have any entities and implants then they understand they start understanding that they are they share something in common and that something in common they just become strong co-creators of creation of something they can perceive together and pursue together and lead by example and maybe show others how to be stronger in this control system reality Um, think about uh, what dynamics or factors allow soulmates to meet again during this life. What will be the factors to meet again? No, the factors. Yeah, I, I, I see right again, like, like in the rows and rows of different races of aliens, entities, beings of light, that they would put them together by contracts. They would put like writing like a see like two sheets and they would write stories that they connect, there would be a point. They actually few points when they can put them together. It also depends on each one's uh, free will mm -hmm. factor and their decisions in life, but they would make sure they would definitely meet together. Because there's something in this meeting if you are free of entities and uh, of controlling of somebody in you, right, in your energy sphere, then the, you can you create this huge fountain of energy that benefits you both. But otherwise, it would benefit the entities who put you together. It's like a chess game. They put you together and they create situations that of suffering on one hand you are so magnetized to each other on the other hand there's so uh, the situations you both have according to the your life contracts do not permit you communicate much and that creates this you know low vibrational energy that feeds both groups of entities who are standing behind these two souls and controlling them During the course of life, could every human uh, being meet its soulmate or more than one? Can you meet more than one or one? You can meet one, you can meet a few. It depends. Um, and once again, if you are like your entities in plants and they control you, then they dis they're the ones to decide whether you meet one or more uh, according to how much it benefits them but if you all of a sudden you free yourself of the influences of those entities then you are free to go in i feel i see like electromagnetic field like they show in physics and there's two dots and they gravitate towards each other because they have the same vibrational pattern and by that pattern they trying to connect 
Um, they, it's almost like they're making those waves and sound, and you know, it's all like mm-hmm. gravitating in that field together. And then you just, it's just like, shoom. Yeah, it's almost like a fountain of energy. It just, it's, it's just so beautiful. It's got the sparks around and you don't have to talk. You're just telepathically connected. You, there's no uh, frustration with each other. There's never, none of that. Just pure like respect and understanding towards each other and this uh, knowing that this is a person and he's like part of me somehow that feeling is very deep in that case if there's no uh, attachments like with entities when the, when there's no yeah. manipulation right there's no manipulation you're clean and I see the rays of energy is going to the parallel lives that you and him or her are together also sharing the same experiences on those planets too in that you feel that connection that way even more uh, from a karmic point what does this involve uh, meeting meeting them from a par- uh, karmic point yeah well the if, point of view of karmic right it's like you know I see the gaps so the it's like a big wheel like a bike wheel and there's just spikes so in those on the at the end of the spikes there are like dots and the dots are lives and if if in between the spikes there's just in between lives controlled by entities and you are just almost like a program that you get out of the body from a life. You go into this, I don't see like a, it's a room, but it's a, it's a projection. It's like a holographic projection. Mm-hmm. Then they run this program to you. They read off of you, all your regrets, what you feel like you haven't done. And they tell you, hey, there's a soulmate you've met, but you mm, didn't stay together long but you were supposed to, and that kind of creates karma. They use it as a karmic connection that you have to go back together to redo something. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's the karmic thing. And I feel like it's, it's beneficial for those entities to do that to you because somehow they hook into the other lives you're together also, depending on vibrational level of the planet and whether they can get two aspects of you on the other planets through this karmic connection mm, because it's like in, in that 3d I feel like they can go almost like a portal created and they go through that portal into other lives when you're together with that soulmate uh, so and if you're not if you're clean and there's no really karmic connection it's just a free will connection Mm. like you feel like in this control system you can help each other support each other energetically as as creators and you you can become equal co-creators to to do something together Mm. something important for both of you are there souls aware of being soulmate after incarnating? Um, I don't know. I not really. It just it came to me not really like that. Mm-hmm. You during the life, if you clean yourself of all the influences who control you, then you're more sensitive. It seems like you your gravity. Then that's when you really start. Uh, gravitating towards N- not because you're searching no it just happens naturally and uh, because you always have you're doing something you love at this point and you're not influenced by anybody you're just going according to your soul's desire 
and that that if that person is clean he or she would go the same way clean free free will passage that's that's the way you connect but there's also there are different uh, um, variations there's like sometimes they're not uh, the balance is off and you cannot meet mm. or if it's a little disbalanced that I feel like somebody's pulling the other one and that pulling act is that you, you, you might get disconnected because you feel like the energy has to be equally flowing back and forth because otherwise it would be almost like mm, I don't know it's just too hard on one of the soulmates whoever is a high consciousness level in understanding of things than the other unless the other works on himself or herself to reach that level and to create create a perfect balance okay uh soulmates have goals yeah they can they're free to choose they usually they are so similar and they have similar ideas in mind but i feel like one can wait for enormous amount of time for the other because at some point they even out and they they have similar swirling energies of thought in them what to do what they want to do because they by vibration and it creates a certain idea in this certain space and time reality that they are it it's just natural it's mm -hmm. natural that they have the same idea in mind what to do mm -hmm. okay can soulmates uh, live experience in other planets and inside non-human beings yeah do I see that I saw birds I saw butterflies I saw different type of um, alien races yeah mm -hmm. do you see them maybe in the same time as one is in earth and other another one is in another planet mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I see myself with was a person like uh, the soulmate that I feel and then I know I have already traveled you know how like like astral travel and I see us in different planets together and that made me understand why this enormous attraction and the same ideas is almost like he scans my my head my brain right or my mind and he knows exactly what i want without even asking so that just gives you comfort when you connect with somebody like that um what are the advantage and disadvantage of living the experience in the third dimension with a soulmate or simply meeting them what will be the advantage or disadvantage advantage is i see both soulmates when they are even they create some sort of perfect bubble of energy of their own timeline together when it comes to like the word untouchable like they are in their creation together, the untouchable, the very strong, strong force of energy. I, I see like like a meteor, you know, like just falling through all kinds of now levels of thickness of vibrations through or like a comet together. Disadvantages. Right, disadvantages, it depends. Disadvantages, if one of them is controlled by entities, that they can, <laughs> I don't know, just towards wreak havoc in the other's life, but the other would actually 
I see the hands like doing this. Mm -hmm. They would put a wall in between. They, the other part would not want to connect. Like the other soulmate would, would want nothing to do with that other person. Even though you would still feel there's something close, like a deja vu moment type thing, but no, energetically, totally different people. Mm -hmm. um, would it be would it be the one who doesn't have uh, attachments or or to other energies um, wanted to help the other one that is uh, contaminated or I see would it, would it see. be a drawn between them one to to rescue the other one maybe yeah it's from zero to thirty percent if it's see it it's almost like. It, the percentage matters a lot mm. how much this person is controlled mm. and how much you know just like I it would comes to me heavy control or low control and I see either a lot of implants a lot of entities a lot of commotion or not so much or the soul is so strong that you know how some souls even like get rid of implants by themselves and entities like this type of thing because sometimes there is a still like a little hole I see through his energy body and it's shooting the soul energy through and then when it connects to the other soulmate the other soulmate connects and it helps it make it bigger 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 and expand and then by expanding, raising vibration, it can just literally melt the implants. And oh. it's, you know... To, to the one who doesn't have the attachments. No the, no, the one who doesn't have the attachments can help that way. Oh, okay, okay. To that. But it's only if it goes over 30%, mm -hmm. when it comes to me, then this person would might try it, but I would feel like this person with attachments brings he or him or her down it's very heavy energy then they would be disconnect yeah. sometimes a disconnect for a time mm -hmm. for a time segment when this person gets to the point when it gets rid of all this attachments and they uh, you know connect again reconnect and would it, it just depends there's so many uh, yeah. different um, situations mm -hmm. let's focus on one let's focus on one combination of two and how um, if one has the the connections with entities or, or some sort of contamination uh, we're not being a neutral space between them that they can connect like maybe telepathically and and just yeah. a, a space where there's no interference even though one, one has has entities. I'm sorry, interrupting you, but I see I see like a big octopus inside that person with when you said entities and mm -hmm. he's like the tentacles coming out and trying to latch on to get attached, you know, hook on to, to the one. other person oh, okay. to get the vital energy out. Mm -hmm. And that person feels it because it's clean. Of attachments and that's when disbalance happens but then this person might start searching for it depends how open it, the person is like I see implants in the head so yeah. um, if it's like if it has heavy implants and influences they would can take a long time and they could never meet or they the entities would try to push him or her to meet mm -hmm. this clean one to get energy out different ways possible different scenarios and timelines but sometimes it just doesn't work other times it does and that's when the free will comes to place because entities they control but they can't control everything mm -hmm because the soul is so unpredictable you know it can just like I feel like almost 
an explosion of a bomb if the soul starts understanding something at a rational level mm -hmm. and conveys it from sub subconscious to conscious that connection happens mm -hmm. even at a low rate and then all of a sudden um, this person can even with the help of the clean one can disconnect from an entity from the entities and all it takes is just it's almost like they, it sends the rays of information, shares information just by uh, touching each other's energy spheres. Mm -hmm. You read off the information of each other. You share it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much, Oksana. Now we're gonna we're gonna go back to the place where you are right now in your room I'm gonna count one two three and you're gonna disconnect from everything your CD start to wake you up <laughs> BC, BC, BC time there one coming back slowly to your body two feeling great, disconnecting from everything and everyone you connect in this session. Coming back slowly, feeling awesome, great, relaxed, peaceful, happy. And three, feeling your body, open your eyes whenever you're ready. <laughs> Hello, welcome back. Hi. <laughs> the uh, construction yes department. yes well they give us time they give us some time for to work until the end so that was good <laughs> right. uh, yeah. but it's just the time of the day well thank you very much Oksana I'm gonna I'm gonna stop the recording that was that was a great session <laughs> thank you <laughs> Bye. buenos dias Dobre. bienvenidos a este primer video de disclosure en español y polaco. Bardzo was serdecznie witamy na tym nowym wideo, które będzie w języku hiszpańskim i polskim na kanale Disclosures. Vamos a producir mucho más videos en futuro como estos videos informativos. W przyszłości stworzymy dużo więcej takich wideo, które będą was informowa informowały o różnych rzeczach. Porque estamos notando que cuanto más se va divulgando este trabajo, estas hipnosis por internet, también cuanto más mala información se está difundiendo. A to dlatego, że zauważyliśmy, że im więcej wstawiamy sesji z naszymi hipnozami, tym więcej jakby informacji sprzecznych zaczyna się rozprzestrzeniać. Y entonces hoy vamos a hablar de las sesiones investigativas. Więc dzisiaj będziemy mówić o sesjach badawczych. Porque estoy viendo que hay personas que a lo mejor se dedican a una sesión con una persona, se van a algún lugar, preguntan algo y lo poco de información que pueden extraer de una sesión se lo, se lo creen como si fuera oro, completamente puro oro. Bo zauważyłem, że są takie sesje i takie osoby, które robią jedną sesję z jedną osobą na dany temat i kiedy wychodzi tam jakaś informacja, to jest ona odbierana, jakby to było rzeczywiście, jakby to było rzeczywiście coś niesamowicie wiarygodnego, jakby to było czyste złoto. Yo os digo que la sesión así dicha investigativa no existe. Ja chciałbym wam powiedzieć, że sesja badawcza tak naprawdę nie istnieje. Entonces podríais como preguntar, entonces cuando haces una sesión a un cliente y preguntas cosas, ¿por qué preguntas? Więc mógłbyś sobie, mógłbyś mi zadać pytanie, więc skoro robisz jakąś sesję z jakąś osobą i zadajesz jej pytania, to właściwie po co je w ogóle zadajesz? Sí, sabemos que la información en hipnosis está muy, pero de verdad muy contaminada. Me bardzo dobrze wiemy, że 
informacja, która wychodzi podczas hipnozy jest niezwykle, ale to niezwykle zanieczyszczona. Esa información, así como sale de la hipnosis, no podemos tomarla como conocimiento, como investigación. Więc taka, taka, takiej informacji, która wychodzi podczas sesji hipnozy, nie bierzemy nigdy jako takiej informacji, która jest rzeczywiście zgodna, z, bardzo prawdziwa, zgodna z prawdą i oczywista. En el caso de sesiones a clientes, la información que sacamos no sirve por otro objetivo. El objetivo es llegar a la causa de su problema y trabajar. Te informacje, które uzyskujemy podczas sesji dla klientów, służą nam zupełnie do czegoś innego. Celem jest to, żeby znaleźć przyczynę i pracować nad nią. Pero qué significa que la información está contaminada? ¿Cuánto está contaminada y por qué? Ale co to właściwie oznacza e, informacja zanieczyszczona? Kiedy jest zanieczyszczona i dlaczego jest zanieczyszczona? Hay que saber que cuando nosotros pedimos una información y nos llega, nos llega a través de una persona en hipnosis, esta información sale de una fuente, para así decirlo, y atraviesa muchas dimensiones, muchas densidades. Cuando prosimos a una información en la sesión, esta información powiedzmy to w ten sposób, pochodzi z jakiegoś źródła, ale w międzyczasie przechodzi przez wiele gęstości i wiele wymiarów. I también pasa por conciencias, por inteligencias. Esa información viene atrapada en el éter por varios seres. Ale ta informacja przechodzi przez, prze, też przez wiele umysłów, wiele świadomości. Jest po, istnieje w eterze i może być przechwycona również przez wiele bytów. Estos seres, estas inteligencias, pueden voluntariamente o involuntariamente distorsionarla. Y te byty, te istoty lub świadomości mogą ją zniekształcić świadomie lub nieświadomie. Y además, la persona que está en hipnosis tiene sus creencias, su mentalidad, su perspectivas, su, sus opiniones. Esta estructura mental Contamina también esta información. A co więcej, osoba, która jest w stanie hipnozy, ma swoje własne przekonania, swoje własne wartości i wierzenia, swoją własną mentalność i przez tą właśnie strukturę całą mentalną również może dojść do jeszcze kolejnego zanieczyszczenia. I además, si nosotros queremos investigar, por ejemplo, una persona o un ser que no tiene ninguna conexión con el ambiente hipnótico donde estamos trabajando, Esta persona puede no autorizar la salida de informaciones de, de sí mismo. A co więcej, jeśli połączymy się z jakąś istotą, która absolutnie nie należy do tego środowiska hipnotycznego, w którym pracujemy, taka istota może nie zgodzić się na przekazanie informacji. Si hay interacción, si hay interferencias entre un ser y otro, eh, es posible que circule información por las conexiones, por los pactos. Jeśli jest jakaś inter, interferencja między dwoma istotami, to wtedy dzięki tym paktom, albo przez te pakty, przez to połączenie, które istnieje, rzeczywiście wychodzą informacje. Pero si en, en aquella sesión en concreto, ese ser o esa persona se va a cuestionar y no hay ninguna conexión, es muy improbable que llegue una información autorizada. Ale jeśli zdarza się tak, że łączymy się z istotą, która nie ma z tym nic wspólnego, to jest bardzo mało prawdopodobne, że dostaniemy jakąś informację. Entonces, imaginemos que queremos investigar sobre un personaje famoso de la historia. No, na przykład wyobraźmy sobie, że chcielibyśmy otrzymać informację o jakiejś osobie niezwykle znanej, historycznej. Si no tenemos de alguna manera alguna conexión con los elementos del ambiente hipnótico y esta persona, aunque no esté conectada, no autoriza esta, esta información, pues no llega. Jeśli wyobrazimy sobie, że ta e, osoba nie jest w żaden sposób połączona z tym środowiskiem hipnotycznym, w którym pracujemy, Może się tak zdarzyć, że absolutnie nie zezwoli na żadne przekazywanie e, informacji na swój temat. I kiedy pasa esto, hay siempre, o casi siempre, alguna entidad que se aprovecha de la situación. 
I kiedy to się dzieje, zazwyczaj pojawia się jakiś byt, który wykorzystuje tę sytuację. Se puede presentar con la mm, supuesta identidad de la persona o de ser que estamos buscando o puede de todas formas modificar o inventar una información por su cuenta, por su personal ventaja. Może zrobić dwie rzeczy. Albo przyjąć, zidentyfikować się z osobą, o której chcemy zrobić tę sesję, przyjąć jej tożsamość, albo z, zmienić informacje, które, powinny, które chcielibyśmy otrzymać, tak aby to działało na jej korzyść. Nosotros en sesión a clientes podemos trabajar porque el cliente nos autoriza a trabajar en él en su sesión. Podczas sesji dla klientów możemy pracować nad, nad takimi informacjami, bo wtedy bo otrzymujemy zgodę na informacje właśnie dzięki temu klientowi. I możemy pracować z sus seres queridos, por ejemplo, o con los seres que interfieren con ella, propio porque hay estas conexiones. I możemy pracować na przykład z istotami, które kocha ta dana osoba, lub z bytami, które w nią ingerują, właśnie przez to, przez to połączenie, które tam istnieje. Entonces, hay una gran diferencia entre la sesión a un cliente para solucionar sus problemas y hacer sesiones para investigar. Dlatego istnieje ta, ta, taka duża różnica między sesjami, które robimy dla klientów, aby rozwiązać ich problemy, i między sesjami takimi poszukiwawczymi. Por eso, por eso digo que no existe una sesión investigativa. I dlatego właśnie Wam mówię, że nie istnieje coś takiego jak sesja badawcza. Lo que existe es un protocolo de sesiones de investigación. To co istnieje, to pewien protokół sesji badawczych. Hay que seguir un protocolo y hay que seguir ejecutar una serie de sesiones y con personas diferentes. Więc trzeba zawsze śledzić ten sam protokół, a jednocześnie wykonać wiele sesji z różnymi osobami. El protocolo tiene que ser único, unívoco, porque hay que preguntar en un tema las mismas preguntas para ir en la misma dirección. Ten protokół powinien być zawsze taki sam, ponieważ należy zadawać takie same pytania, tak aby iść zawsze w tym samym kierunku. Cuanto más está restringido este espacio de investigación, cuanto más podemos tener eh, más probabilidad de tener buena información. Im bardziej zawężamy obszar naszych poszukiwań, tym bardziej prawdopodobne będzie, że otrzymamy dobre informacje. Sí, podemos también eh, aumentar este espacio, pero tenemos que aumentar proporcionalmente el número de sesiones por hacer. Możemy oczywiście rozszerzyć ten obszar, ale wtedy będziemy zmuszeni również rozszerzyć ilość tych sesji. Luego, cuando tenemos una grande serie de sesiones pero estamos hablando de centenas o de hasta de millares de sesiones. Y wtedy mówimy o olbrzymiej liczbie sesji, od setki po, po tysiące. Tenemos que recoger toda aquella información que es común a todas o a casi todas estas sesiones hechas. I wtedy musimy pozbierać te informacje, które są wspólne dla wszystkich bądź prawie wszystkich tych sesji. Esta información común os va, va a saber que es un porcentaje muy pequeño con respecto a la totalidad de la información. I zobaczycie, że ta informacja wspólna będzie naprawdę niewielkim odsetkiem tych informacji, które się tam pojawią. Są pepitas de oro. To są takie malutkie ziarenka. Es como si nosotros vamos a un río, vamos a coger este filtro, vamos a coger muchísima arena para recoger solo muy pocas pepitillas de oro. Y można to przyrównać do poszukiwania złota, kiedy filtruje się dno rzeki, zbiera się mnóstwo piasku, a na koniec pojawiają się maleńkie ziarenka złota. Es así que es información de oro. Y to jest właśnie ta informacja złota. Si hoy podemos decir que hay seres que interfieren bastante con el ser humano y que tienen formas de animales reptiles o de animales a forma de insectos, etc., es porque todo esto sale desde que se empezaron las sesiones de hipnosis y hay muchísimas, millares y millares con esta información común. 
I jeśli dzisiaj możemy powiedzieć, że są ingerencje, które przybierają formy albo reptilii, albo jakichś insektów, to dlatego, że takie informacje wychodzą od początku naszych sesji hipnotycznych i są wspólne i jest ich tysiące. Pero si yo digo que la ciudad de Nueva York en el 1452, en exacto en aquel punto, había eh, una casa que vivía un viejo, un viejo que se llamaba Tom, pues solo en aquella sesión ha salido y cuanto más contaminada puede ser, no lo va a saber nadie. Ale jeśli chciałbym powiedzieć, um, przekazać taką informację, że w Nowym Jorku w 1452 roku stał taki a taki dom, w którym mieszkał taki a taki starszy pan o imieniu Tom, to nie mam pojęcia, jak bardzo zanieczyszczona będzie ta informacja. A si entonces se hace investigación. Es un trabajo muy largo, muy duro <coughs> y tiene que ser hecho em, con un protocolo riguroso i severo. A więc właśnie w taki sposób należy robić sesję badawcze. Jest to proces bardzo długi, ciężki i który wymaga bardzo restrykcyjnego protokołu. I to jest po prostu, że nosotros ja vamos a empezar a hacer ciclos de investigación. I właśnie dlatego zaczniemy teraz robić takie cykle badawcze. La estructura del team, que cada vez va creciendo eh, siempre más, i el numero de clientes que cada día mm, no, contactan con nosotros nos permiten organizar estos ciclos de investigación. I ponieważ struktura naszego zespołu cały czas się powiększa, a także liczba klientów, którzy, którzy kontaktują się z nami każdego dnia, te dwa te czynniki pozwalają nam na to, żebyśmy zrobili taki cykl badawczy. Creo que ya he dicho todo, o casi todo. Eh, cualquier pregunta podéis escribirla en los comentarios del vídeo o donde sea publicado el vídeo. Myślę, że powiedziałem wszystko, bądź prawie wszystko, a jeśli macie jakieś pytania, to proszę eh, zadajcie je pod tym wideo. Gracias por vuestra atención. Dziękujemy za waszą uwagę. Y gracias a ti, Milena. Gracias a ti, Carlos. Dziękujemy. Ciao. Ciao.